Hello everyone, my name is Supercharacter and welcome back to another behind the scenes video, the second one on my channel right now. <laughs> what you're looking at in front of you is um, my newest tank that I'm actually working on. This is the Type 5 Chiri. Uh, I know another Japanese tank, I really love Japanese tanks, so <laughs> that's why I'm making these right now. So actually, let's, um, as usual, get a bit of the history out of the way. So the Type 5 Chiri, it's a 1945 design, all the way at the end of the war. Japan was sort of adapting to uh, the new uh, American tanks, like the Sherman and that sort of stuff. So they came up with this really large tank, actually. It's a medium tank, but when we look at the size of the vehicle, it's more of a... Well, size-wise, it's compared to, like, the Tiger 1, so it's a massive vehicle. But still, a medium tank, and still pretty fast, actually. So the gun on this vehicle is a 75mm Type 5 um, uh, tank cannon. Uh, in the front of the hull, it actually has another cannon, which is kind of, kind of, kind of interesting. Not something you see quite a lot with um, hull-mounted uh, guns. I guess you could think of uh, something like the American M6 uh, heavy tank, but that's heavy machine guns in the hull, not a natural cannon. But this is a 37mm Type 1 cannon. So this was mainly going to be used against light tanks. Think of things like Stuart or M3s. America still used those quite a lot at the end of the war. And it also has a machine gun, a 7.7mm Type uh, 97 cannon, cannon machine gun, I mean, sorry. So, um, the Lego set itself, I'm going to be very careful here, because this is the first version of it. And as is common with the first version, things fall apart and things are not stable, things are not strong, you know. That's why you build these sets, to see if they're structurally sound or solid or whatnot. The hull itself is pretty solid actually, but the wheels they fall off all the time, the turret likes to fall apart, but I'll do what I can do. If it falls apart, I'll just turn off the camera, build, rebuild it, and then we'll just continue from there. So as you can see, the uh, the whole gun can actually um, aim up and down, not left and right. In real life, it could uh, go left and right, just a tiny little bit, just a couple of degrees. But the uh, Lego set only goes uh, up and down for now. Maybe, now nah, I, I, I don't think I'm going to make it go left and right. That, that'll just be too much effort in such a small space right there. Main gun can also move up and down a little bit. Not a whole lot, but that is because I have a detailed breach inside of the turret as well. So that limits the uh, the movement quite a lot. Um, yeah, as you can see, the front, a whole bunch of slope plates. I can actually pick it up and hope none of the wheels fall off. But you have a bunch of slope plates. I want to really get the shape down of this vehicle. As you can see, this does not um, go extremely smooth yet, so we'll have to take a look at that. Something I took a lot of time into this one was the uh, the actual suspension. As you can see, as you can see this different... Uh, let me get the light right over here. There's, uh, it has return rollers, it has actual wheels that turn around, so there's a suspension going on. So I'm really happy with this, how the suspension looks. It's just that the wheels uh, fall off too fast right now. And also, it runs very smoothly. <laughs> this is something I was uh, really surprised by. It actually runs this nicely. But going to the back of the vehicle, we actually have a little bit of an exhaust here. Also something I took a little bit of time in. So I think this looks quite nice. So the engine is uh, in the back here. Exhaust pipes go up. They come together over here. And this is the actual exhaust for the, where the, the fumes come out. Engine deck. Also have some grills over here. Also a chain. If you actually look at the... Uh, if you look at video games like um, World of Tanks and uh, War Thunder, they all have uh, modeled in with a chain. And thought, this is a nice touch, so we just have a little chain right there. Please don't fall apart. There we go, the other side, same deal. The slope plates, nothing going on here. Same uh, transmission, uh, uh, suspension, I mean, sorry. Now let's actually try something very dangerous, which is uh, going into the turret. Easiest way to get into this right now, I don't know if I'll keep this later, but uh, it's just to... Take this whole thing off. <laughs> there we go. So as you can see, here we actually have the breach. Uh, something I should actually... Um, this tank... I should have cleared this up in the beginning of the video. So this tank you're looking at right here is a Type 5 Chiri 2. This is a further development of the Chiri, which had a much larger turret. Like, as you can see, the turret is huge on this tank. That was because it was going to have a tray auto-loading system. So one shell was going to be in a breach, and two shells would be sort of uh, on the side of the breach in these ready racks, or in these uh, simple trays. So when the gun fired, the loader could just, I don't know, flick some uh, switches or move the thing around, but he could just very quickly get that one shell into that breach. So this gun could fire three times in a very high fire rate. So this, was, this, this is more of like an ambush tank. It would just be sitting on a hill waiting for its prey, and then it would just kill three of them extremely fast. Now, as, you, as I said, the gun, uh, the gun moves around, but it's just limited in the amount of room I have in this turret. 
Now, also the reason why this turret is kind of unstable, and I'm just trying to be so careful, is that that's all these little extra side, um, that all these extra plates that are slightly not straight. So I tried to get that shape down. The shape is overall quite nice looking, but I just need to get the strength down. This plate right here likes to fall off quite a lot, so let's not touch that too much. Now, if we're looking at um, the top of the turret, it has two antennas, of course, and also has a little commander hatch. Uh, these do open up, and this is not going to cooperate, is it? No, I guess I'll just rip the whole thing off then. There we go. <laughs> but as you can see, there's actually nothing uh, below it. Man, this really doesn't like to. There's nothing below it, so you, you can get a crew member, I guess, but I don't think you can put them in with, uh, with lags on. Maybe, oops, sorry, my dude. <laughs> come on, get the, okay, well, the legs don't want to come off, but maybe if you get the legs, there we go, Jesus. So now we have a headless crew member, you know, it's that guy from uh, the Fury movie. So you can, maybe if you get him in like that, you can actually have a nice look looking guy, so. But maybe I'll um, do some further work into that one to make it uh, more functional. But that all comes down to how strong I can make the roof. Oh Christ! So <laughs> I would just keep the hatches open for now. It, it's it's very frustrating, but also very fun to work on the first version of a model because you're going to make mistakes. Things are going to fall apart. And when I was building this vehicle, um, the overall hull, while in the end it is strong, but while you're building it, it likes to fall apart all the time. It's just it, it's a learning curve, really. The last thing I guess I'll show you, and I'm pretty sure wheels are gonna fall off. So the bottom of the vehicle, there we go. So we've got a couple of um, a couple of axles going on here. I tried this new design to actually see if we can get some nice rotating wheels and all that stuff. So it worked out quite nicely. Now I just need to make sure that it's more strong. I'm surprised the wheels are still on. Kind of makes it look like I'm lying, right? Oh, well, there we go. So yeah, that is another one. Um, this is the second set I'm working on. Like the previous video was the OI. This is the Chiri. I have some other projects currently going on and currently planned, but they are not actually in physical form yet. I could make a video about them, but then I'll just be looking at a, uh, no, you'll just be looking at the software and not really like a full physical model. I, I quite like the physical models, so it's better to show off. And it also shows that what you're actually making also is, um, is capable of being built in real life. There are a lot of people out there that design things only on the software and hats off to you, but I think you actually need to build them in real life as well if you actually want to sell them. You know, make sure that the people show that it actually works. So, yeah, there's the uh, Type 5 Chiwi. Hope you liked this video. Like with the previous video, um, if you want to support me, I have a Patreon account, so be sure to go over there. Um, like I also said in the OI video, I usually keep these behind-the-scenes video only for the Patreon supporters. But right now, I thought... Let's just make these videos uh, public so everybody can see. So you can get my name out there, you know. So be sure to share this with your friends. Uh, if you have a guy that's really crazy about Lego and Japanese tanks, show him this, please. <laughs> Maybe he can uh, give me some further ideas or improvements. So, as usual, be sure to check out my Patreon account. If you decide to support me, thank you very, very much. And uh, have a nice day, and I'll see you later.